Hello internet friends, my name is John and in this video I'm going to be sharing some tips with you that's going to allow you to make your GitHub profile ready for job applications. So we're going to make it look all nice and smooth so when you're applying for those jobs you're going to increase your chances that you're going to get a interview. So we all know that when we're applying for jobs we need to have a bang in CV. Now I've been interviewing a lot of people recently and one mistake that a lot of developers don't do is try and make themselves stand out in the crowd somehow. Now we all put links to our GitHub, however it's very common that when you actually click on those links, those profiles don't stand out. So what I'm gonna do in the next five, 10 minutes is show you how to set up your GitHub profile for success, yeah. So if you haven't come across my videos before, my name is John and I do your weekly YouTube videos on web development, productivity, programming, all that beautiful stuff. So I recommend that you hit the subscribe button because doing that will make you an absolute legend. So assuming you've done that, let's go and take a look at my GitHub profile and I'll teach you how you can make it look poppin'. Well, hello, and this is my GitHub profile. So what we'll do is walk you through the profile homepage first, because that's probably key. Now, if you want to have a look at my profile online yourself, it's John D. Jones POC, proof of concept. And this is a profile I created a few months ago. So first, let's start with the mundane and boring stuff. However, this is really key. As you can see on the left hand side right here, we have all your profile information. Now, first off, you can see a big image. This image should be a business professional image. This shouldn't be you trying to talk to a girl, you trying to show off your six pack abs, you trying to show off on a beach. This should be a profile image that you would use at your place of business, simple. You also wanna use your own name. So the name that you're applying the job for, this should be your name, shouldn't be your company name, shouldn't be, you know, I'm the G-Dog, I'm the Schnizzle Mizzle. This should be your actual name because you want to look professional. Now, we also need some blurb. What I suggest you do is get the first line of your CV, copy, paste, put it in there, job done, professional looking blurb. Now, you can also put a link to your website if you've got one, and hopefully you do. You should also put your location so your future employer knows where you live, because that's also very important. Now, as you can see back on the profile overview, we've got three main sections. And I think these are the ones that a lot of your employers will look at. So contributions in the last year, I think this one's really important. So if I wanna hire someone, I don't wanna hire someone who's just gonna do a nine to five. At five, they swan off and they don't really care what they wanna do. I want to work with people who really care what they do. And I think one way that you can show an employer that you care about programming and you actually generally enjoy it is to do some coding in your own time. So if you can show me that you're making regular contributions into your own GitHub, to me, this means that you actually like what you do and you've got a bigger chance of making it to an interview. So the next thing we've got are pinned favorite projects. So these are your six favorite projects that you want to show off to your employer. Now, obviously to do this, you just need to click on this customize your pin button right at the top here. Beautiful highlighting. So just pick the six projects you think is the coolest. Now, obviously you might be sat there going, I haven't got a profile, I've got no code. What should I show people? So what I suggest you do is go over to this thing called the YouTube it's this new thing, type in say JavaScript projects, or C Sharp projects, whatever you're doing. And then as you can see, we've got this, build a clock. Woo, a clock, build Candy Crush. And as you can see, most of these tutorials are gonna take you an hour. So go through here, find some interesting ones or ones that you're really interested in. Might be AI, might be game development, might be C Sharp, whatever it is. Go through, do 20 sort of, uh, tutorials, put those within your repository and you're gonna have six things to show off. Now the final thing in this overview page is this intro blurb. Now this is fairly new into GitHub, when I say fairly new, it's a few years old. However, creating this is probably not as intuitive as you think. So to create your own one, what you wanna do is get your GitHub profile name. So as you can see, mine is John D. Jones dash POC. Then you want to go to your create a new repository. So let's just go new repository at the top here. And then the name of your repository should mirror your profile name. So let's go back to here. 
as you can see, I've got all of my repositories in this list. And if I do John D. Jones dash POC, you can see that I've got a uh, repo which mirrors my profile name. And in here, as you can see, we've just got a, a readme.md, so markdown, so readme markdown. In here, you can go in, you can write some markdown, and you can add in your profile information or your welcome text. And this is then going to automatically show in your overview as soon as you commit and push that branch into master. So beautiful. We now have a very professional looking overview page. Now I'm going to give you some tips on how you should structure your repositories so that when people are looking at your code, it's going to look beautiful and amazeballs. With about five minutes worth of effort, we now have a very professional looking GitHub overview profile page. The next thing you need to do is put that same level of detail into your repositories. So let's go through and have a look how we can do that. So clicking on the repositories button at the top, you can see that I've got 108 repos. So obviously if the more repos you have, probably the more you're gonna show off to your employee that you care what you do. Now, one thing you might notice when you're going down here and scrolling through all my repositories is that you can see that for each repository, I've got a name. It's using a consistent naming convention. I've also got a description and it's also got tags. So the way that you can add in all this extra information about your repositories is click on it, go to the about us section at the top here, Click on the little icon here, and this should give you a repository details editing page. In here, I suggest you always have a website for each one of your repos so people can actually see the working thing. If you don't know how to do this, look at Netlify because this will be super simple for you JavaScript users out there. As you can see, we can have topics. So tag in any programming language that you're using, so JavaScript, CSS, and then just put a simple description. Now I suggest that you go through and do this for every single repository so you have that nice uniform look so everything looks very similar. Now one thing which is also key is giving people more information about your project. Now I use a standard template that I created myself to do this. So if you click on any of my repositories, so we've got Fla uh, Flappy Bird, we've got Pac-Man, you can see that my readme's are structured very similar. So for each and every repository within your profile, you want to create yourself this readme.markdown file, readme.md. In here, you want to give yourself a name. You want to give a description. Ideally, you want to give a link to where someone can view it. Now, if you can't have a working demo that you can link to, maybe you can do some screenshots or maybe a GIF. That'd be really good. In here, you also want setup instructions. You want to tell people how they can use it. If you've made any funky or really good design decisions, you should add those in there. Also, I find it really good to give a overview of all the different technologies that the project uses, just so someone can go in and have a good understanding about what your project is all about. Now, this to me just screams the attention to detail, and that's really important. So quality, and you care about what you do, and you're a good craftsman or craftswoman, that you're actually gonna go in and you're gonna have this level of detail. And for me, this level of detail is a thing which will make you stand out between everyone else. So as you can see, I've got some games in here that I've created. So we've got Flappy Bird, we've got Pac-Man. Now I've also got some job interview questions. So as you can see here, clicking on album listening, we've got our description. So we've got a readme in here. We've got the specification. So this is a actual job interview question that I had to fill in a few years ago. So this is actually pasted from the employer. So we've got, you know, fill in some test data, do blah, blah, blah. I put in my ex the screenshots, some expected solutions. So when people are going to look at you, they can go through and see some of the more intricate code that you're writing. So obviously you wanna have that flair, that passion, you wanna have your own projects, but also it's good to have a mix of a few job interview projects that you can show people what you're all about. So based on those three things, you're actually now nailing the repositories. So we've got our about for each repository. We want a readme. We want the readme to be standardized. So create a standard template, come over mine and copy mine if you really want to, or create your own. It's very super simple. And obviously for each single type of repository, you want to make sure that you have some which are your own hobby projects and things that you think are cool. And ideally you want to have some which are job interview projects, which shows you doing things like, you know, sorting, algorithms, async, whatever it is, but something which actually shows you know more in-depth things about the technology or framework that you're working with. 
I am very confident that if you follow the steps outlined in this video, that by the end of the process, you're going to have a great looking GitHub profile page that's also going to dramatically increase the chances that you're going to be asked to attend an interview. Now, if you're wanting to get your dream job and you have 100 people applying for it, you have got to be willing to put in the extra effort and work harder than those extra 100 people in order to get to the interview stages. You need to be confident that you're doing everything that you, that you physically can to get that interview. And making sure that you have a great GitHub profile page is one way of doing that. Now, again, if you're struggling for project ideas, go over to YouTube, research some stuff and start creating projects. This is gonna get you well on your way of getting that dream job. Anyway, I really do hope that this video helps someone land a great job. If it does, I would love to hear it below in the comments. So please leave any ideas, thoughts, suggestions, how it goes below. If you haven't already, like I said at the start of this video, hit that subscribe button. You don't want to be a numb nuts. You want to be a legend. Hit subscribe now. Also, if you want to do me an absolute solid, please hit that like button because liking stuff basically hit um, tricks YouTube into sharing my video to more people. Also, if you want to see more of my content, I do do a weekly newsletter. It goes out every Sunday, gives you an update of the content I've been producing. Also gives you some links and resources to stuff like this, stuff which will basically help you get paid more money or become better at programming. It's free, there's no spam, so I suggest you sign up there. Otherwise, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world right now and happy coding.